Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer with St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today, the church remembers Henry Martin, priest and missionary to India and Persia. One good example is worth a thousand exhortations. The good example of young Henry Martin led to a flurry of enthusiasm for the Church of England's missionary efforts in India and the East. Martin was born in Truro, Truro England, and educated at Cambridge, where he was a friend of Charles Simeon. Henry was a very bright, lovable, and dedicated young man, and it was probably Simeon who encouraged him to take up a missionary vocation. In 1805, Martin became a chaplain for the East India Company upon Simeon's recommendation and sailed to India. There he served the church in Calcutta, founded schools at Patna and Kanpur, and translated the New Testament and the Book of Common Prayer into Hindustani. He traveled widely, preaching, teaching, and helping those in need in every way he could. He went to Persia and there translated the New Testament into Persian. Travel in those days brought few pleasures and many hazards. Exhausted and seeking some respite for soul and body, he went to Asia Minor where the climate and civilization were somewhat more hospitable. There at Tokat in modern Turkey, he became very ill and was befriended by Armenian Christians. He died there at age 31 and was buried by Armenian clergy. So let us begin in the Book of Common Prayer, Morning Prayer, Rite 2, hmm. starting on page 78 and quickly moving to page 80. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Let us now say in unison the Vanite found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 18, part 1, verses 1 through 20, found on page 602. Let us, let us say it together responsively by whole verse. <laughs> I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my stronghold, my crag and my haven. My God, my rock in whom I put my trust, my shield, the horn of my salvation and my refuge. You are worthy of praise. I will call upon the Lord, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death rolled over me, and the torrents of oblivion make me afraid. The cords of hell entangled me, and the snares of death were set for me. I called upon the Lord in my distress, and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice from his heavenly dwelling. My cry of anguish came to his ears. The earth reeled and rocked. The roots of the mountains shook. They reeled because of his anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and a consuming fire out of his mouth. Hot burning coals blazed forth from him. He parted the heaven and came down and with a storm cloud under his feet. He mounted on cherubim and flew. He swooped on the wings of the wind. He wrapped darkness about him. He made dark waves and thick clouds his pavilion. 
From the brightness of his presence, through the clouds, burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice. He loosed his arrows and scattered them. He hurled thunderbolts and routed them. The beds of the seas were uncovered, and the foundations of the world laid bare. At your battle cry, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and grasped me. He drew me out of great waters. He delivered me from my strong enemies and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into an open place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Now, Shephatiah, the son of Matan, Gedaliah, the son of Pashur, Jugal, the son of Shelemiah, and Pasher, the son of Malchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah was saying to all the people. Thus says the Lord, he who stays in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But he who goes out to the Chaldeans shall live. He shall have his life as a prize of war and live. Thus says the Lord, this city shall be surely given into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon and be taken. Then the princes said to the king, let this man be put to death, for he is weakening the hands of the soldiers who are left in this city and the hands of all the peoples by speaking such words to them. For this man is not seeking the welfare of this people, but their harm. King Zedekiah said, behold, he is in your hands, for the king can do nothing against you. So they took Jeremiah and cast him into the cistern of Malchiah, the king's son, which was in the court of the guard, letting Jeremiah down by ropes. And there was no water in the cistern, only mire, and Jeremiah sank in the mire. Then Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, a eunuch who was in the king's household, heard that they had put Jeremiah into the cistern. The king was sitting in the Benjamin gate. Ebed Melech went from the king's house and said to him, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they did to Jeremiah the prophet by casting him into the cistern, and he will die there of hunger, for there is no bread left in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, take three men with you from here and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. So Ebed Melech took the men with him and went to the house of the king to a wardrobe, wardrobe of the storehouse and took from there old rags and worn out clothes, which he let down to Jeremiah in the cistern by ropes. Then Ebed Melech the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, put the rags and clothes between your armpits and the ropes. Jeremiah did so. Then they drew Jeremiah up from the with the ropes and lifted him out of the cistern. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Turning to page 85. Let us say together, Canticle 8, the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh has his army, has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear, who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, 
and worker of wonders. You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the peoples you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. What then, brethren? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be only two or at most three, and each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silence in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to one, to another sitting by, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. If anyone thinks that he is a prophet of spiritual, he should acknowledge that what I am writing to you is a command of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So my brethren, earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Turning to page 94, let us say together Canticle 20, Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, and you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The third lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet because he is a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple. Truly, I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now, turning to page 96, say together, um, affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You're saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us. That we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. O God of the nations, you gave your faithful servant, Henry Martin, a brilliant mind, a loving heart, and a gift for languages, that he might translate the scriptures and other holy writings for the peoples of India and Persia, inspire in us a love like his, eager to commit both life and talents to you who gave them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as we pray for the needs of the church and the world, I invite your own intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings. We pray for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the missionary diocese of Central and South Angola in the Anglican Church of Mozambique and Angola. We pray for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of Christ Church Eastport, for our siblings in common mission in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, and for our parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Howard, Fred, presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Patrick, Krista, the Soul family, and Barbara. We offer continued prayers for Jan, JB, John, excuse me, Bob, Evie, Mycola, Sarah, Ross, Jenny, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples and places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray, especially for the people of Ukraine and the Holy Land, for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis, for our enemies and those who wish us harm, and that all people may come to understand 
that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, for members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Jerry, Rachel, David, and Spencer. We pray for the departed, for Arye Ziering, Bill Soul, for victims of the war in Ukraine and the violence in the Holy Land, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now say together the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, you may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We wish you a blessed day and hope to see you again tomorrow morning at nine.